Hi everyone, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, I'm going to tackle a topic which a lot of students have been asking me and continue to ask me and a lot of you guys who follow us regularly as subscribers have typed this a lot in the comments and have shot us emails and whatnot. So this is, I guess, the most important thing in the field of music. How do you figure out chord progressions just using this, your ear? And nothing else. Right? So that's what this lesson is about. I am going to deal with a lot of strategies which will help us towards this goal. But before that, there's a lot of pre-planning, a lot of preparation before we get into the actual approaches. So sometimes these apps and all these things out there will will not talk to you about how to prepare and how to plan these things. They'll just give you an exercise. So some some apps may just give you four chords and just expect you to figure that out. Yes, they may go in a structured manner, but there are two problems with these apps. One is they'll be four chords in isolation. They won't be there with the melody or the mel it, it'll mostly be silent. So you're not really learning music in with the real world music. You're learning it with just those chords isolated. It may give you a feel good factor, but apart from that, it's not a great way to learn, to train your ear, right? There are a lot of tips uh, in terms of technology, which I'm also going to tell you throughout this video, but none of those will involve an app. It's going to just involve you and the actual song, Okay, so we are going to focus with you and the song. And in this lesson, due to a couple of reasons, we may not be allowed to play any song for you actually on this uh, platform of YouTube. Otherwise, the video will be taken down. I would have loved to. I do that almost every other class in our Nathaniel School Music Method semester courses where we listen to music and figure it out part by part. But however, what I'm going to do, especially for the Patreon users out there, who, <clears throat> or if you're not a Patreon member, you can become one by going to uh, patreon.com slash jasonzack. You'll have a lot of these exercises available for you and a lot of this will involve you to really get and digest the, these sounds so there are quite a few of them so also owing owing to a lot of time i'm going to do the supplementary learning for this up uh, this video or this tutorial on patreon there'll be a lot of exercises on the forum so do check that out uh, in this lesson however if you choose to only stick with this i would encourage you to get your keyboards out that might help get a book out and um, mo most importantly for our channel please consider giving the video a like the hit the subscribe button and hit that bell icon for regular notifications let's get cracking so before you actually dive into a song when you're hearing a piece of music the first thing is figure out not the chords, but when the chord changes occur, right? So in, other, in this case, if you hear the chords, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. You see, that's a chord which sneaked in between the bar so you not only need to know uh, what the chords are but prior to all that stuff you need to at least know that oh yeah because music is a dynamic art form time is flowing right so you need to know after four beats comes the next chord or is it the same chord like for example <coughs> still F <coughs> still F Now there's a change. Back change. 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 Or the may the change may come quicker. You know this song. For the most part, you'll have the chords changing every two beats or 
mostly every four beats but in some cases you would have like um, a chord change occurring almost every beat so maybe they use some complex movements maybe maybe it's a passing chord passing chords usually happen very fast because they connect to the landing chords so you need to document your chord changes and look at some of my chord charts which i do regularly for my riffs i put them up on patreon and also you'll see some of them in the video as i'm talking how i've put the percentage sign percentage sign means you repeat the chord for a bar then i have a convention which works for me for my gigs where i put a kind of a bracket that indicates that all those chords are packaged together in one bar if i don't put a bracket if i don't put a percentage it is the same chord it is that chord which you see for four counts or for the value of the time signature which could even be 7 by 8 which could even be 6 uh, by 8 which could be 12 by 8 which could be 5 4 or whatever it may be that's lasting for a whole bar of whatever the time signature is then inside the bracket sometimes if i don't put any uh, other uh, additional thing it indicates that the two chords in the brackets are lasting for two counts each minim minim however that could change you could have a chord at 1 2 3 4 1 2 so at the four you could have a different sound so that's where i like to notate it i put a dotted half and then a crotch it to show that oh it's three and then one or you could just write three meets one you could also in some cases there are some some scenarios where the chords are played in accents so you can do they have things like 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 6 you know weird frameworks like that or uh 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 1 2 3 1 so one chord is for 3 counts the other count is for 4 counts you know or even if it's over 4 4 you may have 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 
at a certain scale degree which it will be all anything you hear will need to have a degree because it's all part of a scale almost every single song out there needs a scale like a major or a minor so if you heard the note f you don't have to you don't have to struggle and try to know that it's f you just have to hear something and sing what you heard you need to hear and dive into the bass you need to go to this register to go all the way down and find the bass and if you get the bass notes going you've got yourself the chord like if i i'm in the f major scale you heard an f uh, it's f major bang over job done now you play an a minor and if you can hear and sing that a a there we have it you're done there now you want to do a b flat for instance or you're hearing a chord and if you have ta b flat to you don't know it's b flat you just say la and you align that with the let's say you don't know it's b flat you can always align it later on the piano or you can use an app you can use like a guitar tuner app uh, like ins tuner or anything you have which tunes an instrument right i'm sure you may know of such apps uh, you can just basically sing to into the app to into the app and then it's going to kind of showcase it's going to give you that b flat it's going to tell you that you you have sung b flat and that's how you can use technology which is fine there's i don't see any cheating in that so you sing b flat at least sing the correct bass note use the app for a verification because i'm assuming that you watching the video may not have perfect pitch as is it is a very rare skill even i don't think i have perfect pitch i have what's called relative pitch as we all tend to do so if you give me one note b flat then i can sing f d e flat c d b flat c a b flat and the only reason i'm getting those notes so quickly is because i know the theory of the scale i know the b flat major scale in and out i know all its notes that doesn't mean i have perfect pitch i have relative pitch because i heard b flat and then everything is a point of reference with respect to that target note or that root note as we call it so listen to the bass and after listening to the bass use your theory to write down the scale if you're an f major and yeah that's also important you need to figure out the scale of a song before even attempting the chords because for the most part chord progressions all come from within a scale so it will help to follow a nice flow chart or an algorithm listen to song number 1 prepare all your chords in a neat sheet of paper number 2 and then you would need to listen to the bass note and if once you have found the bass note prior to list, finding the bass note write all the available chords of that particular scale so if it's f major i'll write f major g minor a minor b flat major c major d minor e diminished and that's all if you want to write the secondary dominant chords or the more advanced chords or the borrowed chords feel free otherwise just write the diatonic chords and start with pop songs while you're learning this method don't do queen songs for instance which will be very very tricky to start hearing chord progressions if you have never heard it in your if you have never gone through the process before so now that you have heard the bass to as i told you earlier you could sing it into an app the app gives you the answer another way to do it by bypassing a tuning app is to basically do what sound engineers do which is equalization you could take the song <clears throat> put it into your listening medium and just adjust the equalization maybe if you want to hear the bass you could either increase the bass but then it may boom or distort your speakers so keep the bass as it is and then reduce the treble reduce all the higher frequencies which will have your vocals and what not and yes it is we are in the world of ai there are apps out there which can Uh, do this automatically like moises for example which some of you may know so with an app like that you can just bring in a song you download the song from your um, itunes store or whatever bring it into the software or bring it into the app 
and it can isolate whatever you want for you which again i don't think is cheating it's a good way to improve your skills as an artist or as a musician right you don't want to kid yourself about this so you listen to a song apps like moises or an equalizer tool or an app which can show you for tuning will tell you what is the bass note uh, moises will extrapolate or remove the bass or give you only the bass so you can actually solo the bass or you can even reduce the volume of all the other elements like the vocals and even remove the vocals keep the drums and the bass only and it will be a easy way to figure out the chords so hear the bass treat the bass like it's a tune like ta na 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 you can sing that by hearing cold play do it so why can't you you hear t to ta bass notes are actually much easy because the guy plays it and it goes on sometimes for the whole bar because the bar will <clears throat> the serve the whole chord and the bass note is the root of the chord so it's going to go on for a bar so come to think of it hearing the bass is a lot easier than hearing the melody or notating the melody because the bass is just going to do things like do 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 tum 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 and the bass player would also kind of lead you the listener which is there in an actual song to the next root tum tum tu ru ru dum tum tu ru ru dum and that's actually what we call as a awesome bass line in the first place so if you listen to any song especially blues i would encourage you to start with blues uh, jazz progressions identifying the 251s because those are things you can predict or you if you listen to certain music from certain cultures like spanish music you may find cliched progressions right like things like that or if you listen to a lot of cold play or the modern day electronic dance music stuff they do things like but then sing the bass do 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 okay and with all these apps that with ai taking over yes there are things which give you instant chords for a song i would sincerely encourage you to just avoid all that because why are you doing all this in the first place to become a rock solid musician a musician who can work with anyone else on the planet and a musician who holds his or her ground in any playing environment whether it's a concert whether it's a recording or any session you may have any challenge you put yourself into right which is why if you compare a musician with an athlete an athlete will always play by the rules and ultimately his or her performance is shown on the day of actually doing it so how much ever you try to trick yourself you have to be a good footballer in order to play in a high pressure game it's the same with music so ultimately if you learn whatever it is you're learning you're going to put it on a record or you're going to play it in a gig in front of people and you will know whether you did it well or not right guys so that is one way to really get your chord progressions using the bass note let's move forward right so this may seem very simple or obvious but a song tends to have a lot of chords so if there are too many chords to deal with at least you find out and pinpoint all of the chord points which happened put a question mark or just leave an empty space and then listen to these chords in tiny chunks of data and the tiniest chunk i can think of is two chords which in music we call as a cadence so the cadences are authentic 5 to 1 plagal 4 to 1 deception 5 going to 6 i am in the key of d by the way and then anything which ends on the 5 will be considered half so it creates a kind of a questionable unended open ended kind of sound so authentic and plagal cadences sound very stable very complete a deceptive feels yeah it feels like a new 
un unseen territory because you're moving from major to the relative minor while a half cadence is like you are you need to wait for the next line or you, it's ended with a question mark or a surprise ending so these four cadences have been used by the greatest of the composers for hundreds of years and it's something we need to know so in a song how well or how easily can you identify the cadence okay so is it plagal that would be is it authentic is it deceptive minor or is it ending on the half so cadences are a great tool and we have some exercises waiting for you do check it out and see how you are at cadences or how you are at all these strategies and let us know in the comments we can try and figure out what we should work on moving forward to serve you best great so you're listening to a song and you're absolutely clueless about the chords maybe the bass did not work maybe the um, uh, you're not able to get it through cadences it's a bit weird or different for you well go to the melody isn't it so if you take let's say the melody let's say if the melody is something like this try to figure out all these landing points the landing note is a rather complex subject we have done a few videos on this a landing note is basically a bunch of many things so it's where the note lands which is usually on the beat 1 of the bar also what we call as a strong beat so if you take 2 3 4 you also observe it's landing on the one and it's also very prominent it's a very important note how is it being made important it's played for longer in time this will probably be a minim in comparison with maybe quavers which will be the passing notes trying to take you to the next one or where the melody is trying to run around and have its fun okay so now if you have to harmonize this <clears throat> let's say i'm playing d and as always you need to get the scale that's the first and foremost important thing to do if the scale is d minor which is a relation of which major scale f major right f major has one flat namely b flat so d minor will also have that one b flat so anyway if i am playing a melody which is sort of like pani sa is similar to that pirates of the caribbean thing i hope this video doesn't get taken down anyway so if you do this and try to harmonize this so what are all the what is the palette of chords of f major f major g minor a minor b flat major c major d minor e diminished and so on no that's it actually so if you have a target note d you want to put a chord for the d or you're hearing a song the guy your point of interest is d you've kind of played the song d and then you stop the song you just hit pause i used to do this from the cassette era by the way so so till the song's going on you find that important note which could also be based on the lyric it could be like a very important adjective or something like that so let's say somehow all roads lead to d d is your point of interest what are all the chords which go with d well you have d minor b flat major g minor well you have a few others as well but then we've committed to the d minor domain right so in the d minor domain just using arith just using maths arithmetic you figure out that a chord has three notes so that's three positions low middle high so there's a d so d can be the low note of one chord it can be the middle note of some chord it can be the high note of the other chord because all chords are built from the scale using triads so three notes so d will be there if you didn't understand that logic don't worry but you get the idea i hope so d will be there in the b flat major chord the d minor chord and the g minor chord now will an f major chord work considering i'm on the f major scale and if i play 
not very well isn't it so in other words at the landing point it's these chords which share a tone with the melody they share at least a note in common that's going to be the the chord which will work for that melody and will serve the melody best so when you're listening to a song you're like hey i heard a d that was a melody note d okay why do i need to actually know that it's b flat major i can predict i can predict that it can either be b flat major d minor or g minor and then you can do an ab comparison with the other chords you can do a trial and error as we all like to do but we don't like to do trial and error with like a million possibilities we like the ranges or the options to be like very easy in this case since you know it's going to be one of those three chords maybe g minor it's quite nice that's quite nice that's also quite nice but maybe in the song you listen to it again and you're like hey if i play this works maybe b flat works maybe you also heard it as a rather brave or a happy chord so then you filter out the two minors namely g minor and d minor so that's another way to figure out a chord progression or i would say a chord by ear by not really hearing the chord but by just using a tactical approach the melody is d we can all hear a melody that's the easiest thing to hear it's in the top hear the tune figure out using music theory what are the chords available and just map them out and i say this a lot ear training is not just to train your ear you know it's to train your mind it's to train your mind to know what's coming next it's to give you a predictive way of dealing with music you should be able to know okay that's the next chord it's going to be that i don't even need to hear the next chord it's like you want to take a guess that's what's going to be there you know it's like a game of cards so to speak which you're playing with the song uh yeah <clears throat> so we've looked at approaching the bass we've looked at uh, tiny cadences and now we've looked at the melody there are a couple more strategies which i have for you before we sign off so let's move forward so the other way to figure out chords for a, a song or thus a chord progression is just go by the simple vibe each chord gives to you like a major chord is quite pleasant it sounds happy it sounds stable it sounds positive it sounds like maybe you're back home you're chilling out and then even if i play it rhythmically sometimes we get confused how we play the chord matters if i do <clears throat> this would appear to be more playful chirpy you know na 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 stuff la na 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 very playful or childish if you will now the minor chord on the other hand is a complete polar opposite it's a bit more pensive it's a bit more like your struggle or a sorrow something painful and if you play it in a rhythmic way it sounds a bit sort of mischievous in in a way right some detective movie is happening or whatever so what i'm trying to say is when you hear a song the quality of the chord itself will just tell you hey i heard a major chord and then you can do trial and error like if you are in a major scale there are three major chords now if you just came from a major chord and if you assume that probably the first chord of most songs will be the tonic major which is in the key of f major it will be f major and the next chord you heard is also major so then it could either be b flat or c major with the four chord or the five chord that's one out of two so i think if my strategies in this video give you a kind of a trial and error job of one out of two options or at the very worst case one out of three options i believe i've done my job in conveying the topic to you because that is how even i do it sometimes till this day sometimes i am also trial and erroring things but at least i am in a ballpark of what i know is bound to be right it's not like i'm doing trial and error between things which are not not at all going to work i know it's one of those chords so if you know that it's major you you're in luck if you know that it's minor you're in luck and chord qualities are beautiful it's a beautiful topic to study if you take a dominant chord it's completely different vibe right 
That's a dominant seventh chord which is yearning to go somewhere. La, da, da, da. So if you know that, hey, it's dominant, you can not only say that it is a C seventh, a C, a five, it can also predict what is a five normally wanting to do. What does a seventh chord like to do? It likes to resolve to its one. So you don't even have to hear the next chord. You can guess. Oh, C seventh has to go to F because my theory is sound. I know my theory. So uh, you can you need to find methods also to predict. So coming back, chord qualities are so many. You have a major seventh vibe, which is very dreamy, romantic, sitting on a beach and chilling out. I guess. Uh, then you have a diminished seventh vibe, which is very interesting. So it's like you're confused. You don't know where to go next. Uh, then you have like a minor major seventh vibe, which is all used almost all the time in James Bond movies. And so you have so in other words, you can have like stable chords. You can have unstable chords. You can have very unstable chords. It's the Jimi Hendrix chord, by the way. Can even call it E Jimmy or something, right? Otherwise, you have to say E seven sharp nine. Man, that's tricky. So you have that. You have these chords, which almost tell an entire story of their own, because they have so many notes. They are almost a scale. So that's how you can go with chords as their emotion. Also, what I call as chord quality. The other thing which I think works a lot for Indian classically trained musicians is in India when we learn classical music, we are very familiar with the degrees of scales. Like what is the one in our head we know? Let's say if I'm on the A major, I know that A is going to be my Sa and anything else apart from that. La da is the pa, sa re bi, sa ga si sharp, sa ma di, sa pa e, sa dha f sharp, sa ni g sharp rather tense and sa sa octave, sa 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 ni sa dha sa pa sa ma sa ga sa re sa. So we have these words for these sounds, and the sound is not. We are not calling C sharp. As G, we are calling the vibe created between A and C sharp as the G, or as the third, or as the major third, as we say in Western music. So, in a way, all of these ways of learning music are almost the same. They all want you to achieve the same goal. If you think about it, so A to C sharp. If you can hear that in a chord progression, especially the bass notes like sa. If that bass is so clear, if you accentuate it, sa ga, you heard a ga. What is the ga? The third degree. Third degree in a major major scale is what? Major chord or minor chord? Minor, right? If you know your theory. So what's the root A? What's the third C sharp? What is the third going to be? C sharp minor. Voila, you got the chord. It's job done. So if you know your intervals, you can really get to your chord degrees faster. Remember, this is a process. This is not. I mean, we we. I mean, there are a lot of you know uh, words like instant on YouTube. Instant way to figure out chords by ear. I hope we've not used the word instant. We're going to remove that word. It's not a good word because ear training is not going to happen overnight. It won't even. It'll not happen overnight. It's going to only be a gradual process, like an athlete trains a muscle or develops a skill. So we do on our respective field. In in our respective field, it's a gradual process, and the main word which you need to keep pushing yourself to achieve is be patient. You have to have to work on, even if it takes you a few hours. Well, you have to deal with that because training the ear. What's good about it is, if it took you three hours to figure out the chord progressions of a song, which may be less or more. That's not what I'm trying to say here. Let's say it took you three hours to do the first song. I can guarantee you that the second song will not take you three hours. It'll take you maybe an hour. It'll be exponentially easier, and then you can do probably 
after a month of doing this, you can probably tackle three songs in an hour. And then you can do an entire album in an hour if it's a pop album. If it's Queen, it's going to be tricky. If it's Beatles, it's going to be tricky. So uh, that's how you can figure things out. It'll take you like no time. It can come down from like days to hours to minutes to the length of the song. Like you mo won't even need to hear the whole song. You can just know the chords before the song only finishes, right? I'm not trying to show off. I'm just trying to promote the use of our ear when dealing with music. A lot of people like to go with other strategies. You have notation. Staff notation, how on earth is it always going to be 100% right? Are you telling me that Coldplay wrote their own notation and gave it to you on a platter and said, these are the chords of this song. Take it, it's 100% right. I would not trust the chords of the song unless it came from the artist himself or herself or themselves. I think, I think, and notation glamorizes it a bit. It kind of tells, it makes it look fancy. So because it looks fancy, we think, oh, it has to be right. I have to learn it. And it creates a, like a, a psychological problem in, in a way. So YouTube videos also, which video can you trust? Can you trust any video? Even if I teach you a song, can you trust that? Right? So you have to use your own gut, your own instinct and your own skill to even know if the content which you guys are using and finding and searching for are right in the first place. That's why I urge you to have to develop and take your time to develop strong years. Developing strong years is just like doing more and more push-ups over a given amount of time. It's a process. It will not happen overnight. Okay? So I have one more strategy to figure out chords just before we sign off i'm very excited about this so one one thing which appeals to me when i'm listening to a song is just look at the energy states of the chord so can can you just dis determine a chord by being maybe unstable and stable so if you feel that instability leading to something normal that is essentially what this art form is about it's it's carbon copying it's a almost a replica of a visual dynamic art form which is a motion picture or a movie ours is also a dynamic art form it's just that it's not for our eyes it's more for our it's it's for our ears isn't it so when we hear visualize music through our ears so to speak we are feeling the same thing and the artist who's creating the art wants us to feel the same thing. We want that ebb and flow of emotion. Like a movie is not all suspense all the time. It's not chaotic all the time. Even in a horror movie, you'll probably find someone sleeping peacefully somewhere, you know, or, which is also scary sometimes, but still. So th the point I'm trying to make here in any art form, you need that ebb and flow of emotion. The emotion being tense and the emotion being resolved. You cannot have only tense and if it's only resolved, you won't bother watching that particular movie. So using that, there are some chords using music theory which are dominant chords which have a sense of, you know, an instability. Then you need to figure out how to slowly make it more stable and in this case very stable you know you can do this in so many ways and musicians are generally branded by the greatness of their chord progressions using this whole ebb and flow and that's why we like the greatest songs the timeless classics if you will and the 251 jazz cadence is a great example of this phenomenon you have the two which is nice but it's getting very tense there and now it's very stable so almost every jazz song there we go this goes on and on so if you can now brand that, pocket that in your brain and say, hey, I heard this in that other song I did last week. There we have it. You just heard a 251. So a lot of this comes with familiarity. Just like how we know 
the face or or i don't know maybe the fingers or the hands or it's kind of creepy but if you know you know people's appearances you know or the clothes we people wear or objects of interest or food items whatever it may be why can't you identify that with cords how are cords any different it's all going to the same brain at the end of the day all of our sense organs are damn good we know that so use your ears more that's pretty much what this lesson is all about and i always come back to two things which i'll do at the in conclusion the first thing is the uh, what i told you at the very beginning plan prepare and get into an environment a very respectful environment where you are a student doing this job at whatever age or level you are you have to be a student when you're learning a song so make that environment prepare write down your chord where it's changing how long is every chord and last but not least if things fail go through a trial and error cycle like try it if it fails try again and generally i like to work till my brain is a little bit fried up like i don't like to end my work when my brain is like relaxed i like it to be as excited or a bit stressed the reason why i think that works and some of you psychologists out there can tell us in the comments is the next morning when you wake up for some reason the subconscious mind because you put in a lot of effort the previous night it's going to do its work while you sleep and that's something which i found almost every day of me figuring out music it's a struggle the 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 day you're learning it it's a struggle it's a chaotic struggle sometimes sometimes after doing everything well you still can't execute it you can't play it you can't hear it you can't do anything try it again the next morning it's going to be much more easier but don't forget to try it the next morning in other words you should not give up you have to keep at it and it's a beautiful way to learn music and it's a great way to bond with music i understand the sheet reading i understand there are so many visual aids for music out there but the best way to bond with this incredible art form and to make it your own is to just do it from the source into the source the music and your ears it's as simple as that hope you guys found the lesson useful and another reminder there will be exercises waiting for you on our patreon page do consider getting yourselves a subscription uh, it's a 5 dollar a month thing on patreon.com/jasonzack thanks again for watching the video see you in the next one cheers